I have a probability question here. So we've got, we flip a coin three times. What is the probability of the event we get two heads? Okay, so there's a number of ways you could do this. You might think um, that you might want to draw a tree diagram. So you might have um, heads and tails. And then from each of those ends, you will have heads and tails and heads and tails. So that would be the second throw of the coin. And then you will have it a third time. Okay, but that would be quite a big um, a probability tree. Okay, so you might not want to do it like that. You might instead think, okay, what are the different ways I can get two heads? So that might be that you get heads in the first throw, heads in the second throw, and tails in the next one. Or you could have got heads, tails, and then heads. Or it could have been tails, heads, and heads. Okay, so these are the three ways that you could have got it. And if you had drawn a probability tree, the, the branches that you follow for this probability, you would find that it goes heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, head, and then tails, head, head. Now, um, to find the probability, all I need to do now is, um, you know, it, it, remember, it, each of these are independent trials. So this is uh, one flip of the coin, this is another flip of the coin, and they don't affect each other. Okay, so the probability of heads here is half, probability of this one is half, probability of tails here is half as well. So half times half times half would be this one. Same for this one and same for this one. And I've got three of them that, um, uh, that have two heads and one tail. So that would be three times whatever half cubed is. Okay, so let's work that out. So we would have um, half here times half times half. I would have the same again here, half times half times half. And same again here, half times half times half, okay? And three of them, right? So this is, each of these are one eighth, and three of them would make three eighths. So if I was to add them up, uh, that would give me three eighths, okay? So remember, half times half times half is one eighth, add another one eighth, add another one eighth would be three eighths. So this is one way we could do it. But now I want to go to another example where we might say that the coin was flipped more times than three. So let's say, for example, eight times, or six times, or four times. Now, to, to do that, okay, if I was to do, draw a tree, that would take me a very long time, and it would be very messy. Um, or I might want to do this. Now, if I wanted to do it um, six times, for example, so if I throw the coin six times, the, num the, the number of different ways I can get two heads and four tails that's going to be is 15. Now, how do I know that number 15? Well, there's a function that works that out, okay? And the binomial distribution actually uses th uh, that function and it just gives you all the probabilities. So it can tell you all the different probabilities that are possible in such scenarios like this. So let's see another example with maybe more flips of the coin. Okay, so here's another example. Now, um, it's, it's really the same example, it's just that the three I've changed for a six, okay? And as I said, um, to get two heads when we throw the coin six times, that would mean that we get heads twice and tails four times. And I said that there's 15 different ways um, to do that. So to write this out is going to be quite tedious as well. Now. Uh, as I said also that there are functions that can work those numbers out, but f before that, let's just work it out. So now that I know that it's 15, okay, because I've said that, so I can say 15 times the probability of two heads and times that by four tails, okay? So two heads would be half times half, okay? Remember, each trial is independent, so to get a head in each one is a half, so half times half, and then... The four tails, each of them would be half times half times half times half as well, because to get a tails is also half. So times half, times half, times half, and then times half. Okay, so notice what I've done here is I've multiplied these two here because I want the heads, and then I've multiplied that to these four here because that would be four tails. And I said that there's 15 different ways we can arrange the H and the T to make uh, two heads and four tails. So this would be the probability that we're working out here. So this one is simply going to be 15 times, so it'll be 15 times uh, one over 64, 
Okay, and 15 times 1 over 64 is 15 over 64. Okay? Now, all of these probabilities, actually, so say I wanted to know about one head or three heads or four heads or five heads or six heads, all of them are, can be found using a function called the binomial distribution. Okay? And that binomial distribution tells us all of those probabilities. Okay? So, which, so whichever one we need, we, ju we just find it in our binomial distribution and state that as our probability. Okay? So that's what I'm going to show you next. So what I have now is um, the same scenario. We flip, a, uh, we, we flip a coin three times. Okay, so this is three independent trials of flipping a coin. Okay, and we see what the results are. Now, in the result, we are not interested in which order the heads come or which order, which order the tails come. We're just interested in having zero or one or two or three heads. Okay, so. We will, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide the outcomes as successes and fails. Okay? So what I mean by that is we're going to say, um, so for this example, we're going to say head is a success, so that would make tails a fail. Now this success, there's no moral judgment on that. I'm just saying um, that one will be success, one will be fail. So one will be what we're looking for, the other one will be what we're not looking for. Okay? So we are looking for the heads this time. So when I say number of successes here on the table, what I mean is number of heads. Okay, so number of heads would go there. So the probability of success for each independent trial is half. Okay, and notice that the probability for each independent trial is the same, which for this example is half. So notice that it's the same. Okay, so it's half the first time I throw the coin. It's half the second time I throw the coin. It's half the third time I throw the coin. Okay, it's always a half. Now, the possibilities for me, when I look at the number of successes or the number of heads, would be either that I get no heads, or I get one head, or I get two heads, or I get three heads. Now, this table here is one way to show the distribution of the probabilities that I'm interested in, which is the number of successes or the number of heads. Okay? And this is also de uh, described by the binomial distribution. Okay? So this is the binomial distribution, which has uh, three trials okay? and which has probability of success for each independent trial at half. So this table can be described using the following notation. Okay, so we're going to use this notation in our course. So B, and then in brackets, number of trials is three, and the number of, so the probability of getting ahead in each trial is half. Okay, and that's always the case. Now, so th this table is described by this. Now, using this, you can, uh, th this function would be in some calculators or some software, and we can find these probabilities quite quickly. Now, notice that three times is not very many, but say this was much more than three, maybe 100 or 200, then you know, it would take a long time to work out all the probabilities, so it's much easier to have a function that we can use to find the probability that we need. So in the last example that we, on, in the last two examples that we're doing, we were looking at uh, the probability for two heads. So the probability of two heads we can actually find in this table in this position here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill in the table to say what the probabilities are for each of these. So okay. So what I did was I, I, I wanted to put all the probabilities in in one go so that you know that there's a function that can work these out. So this is our binomial distribution actually in a table form, and this is the notation to describe the binomial distribution for our particular example. Now, I want to say a couple of things that are very important um, that need to be in our example in order for us to apply the binomial distribution to find the probabilities, okay? So these are these. That the number of trials is fixed. So we know that in this example, there were three trials, okay? So that's one of them. Another one is that the probability of success is going to be the same for each trial. So the probability of getting heads will be the same in the first throw of the dice, the second, and the third. It won't change. So it won't be half the first time, maybe one-fifth the second time, maybe half again the third time. That would not be suitable for a binomial distribution. The probability has to be the same. Also, the outcomes of the trial, so this trial is to flip a coin, 
And there's actually just two outcomes. There's heads and tails. But if there, even if there were more outcomes, we should be able to divide the outcomes into two. Okay, so the heads and tails naturally just divides into two. But say we were throwing a dice, for example. If we're throwing a dice and the success that we're looking for is to roll a five. So rolling a five would be a success and rolling any other number would be a fail. So there's five outcomes. There's the one, the two, the three, the four, and the six, which are failures. And um, the rolling a five would be a success. So we can actually divide it into success and fail. So we can actually use that kind of example for a binomial distribution as well. Okay? And this is the notation to describe this example using the binomial distribution. I'm going to do that for the other example with a six uh, flipping a coin six times, and I'll draw a table for that one as well so that you can see that next. So here you can see the binomial distribution. Um, so for um, number of tries, six, and the probability of success, half. Okay, so this one is that we flip the coin six times, and here we're saying um, flipping a head is what we're looking for, so that's our success. And there's possibility of getting anywhere between zero heads and six heads, okay? And the probability of getting zero heads when we flip, uh, flip a coin six times, okay, is one out of 64, okay? The probability of getting one head when we flip a coin six times is six over 64. The probability of getting two heads we can find at 15 over 64, okay? And remember, we can also uh, describe this table using the following notation. So it's going to be B, and then number of trials, which is six, and the probability of the success that we're looking for, which is heads, and that's gonna be a half, okay? So again, remember, it's half, the half is the probability each time of getting heads of the six throws that we're going to do. And each of those six throws are independent, okay? And this is one way we can find the probabilities quite easily. Now, you might be wondering now, okay, how do I know these? Now, this is going to be a part of our course that we need to be able to find these probabilities using these functions. And um, the maximum number of trials that we're going to go up to is 10, okay? So the specification says that they won't ask you for um, number of trials more than 10, okay? So anything up to 10, we should be able to find a particular probability. You don't need to draw the whole table maybe, but maybe any particular probability that they might ask for, we need to be able to find it. So for example, ha had the question been, uh, a coin is flipped six times and we're looking for four heads. So what is the probability of getting four heads when you flip a coin six times? And then the binomial distribution will, will, will tell you that um, this is the probability, so it's 15 over 64. So how exactly are we going to find this 15 over 64? That's what we're going to do um, afterwards. So here's a task for you. You need to use this notation that I showed before. So you need to use the notation for the binomial distribution, this one, uh, to describe these scenarios here. Okay. And this notation works like this. So we write the B. We also write B-I-N sometimes, but for this course, we're going to use B. So B and then N is representing the number of trials and P is re representing the probability of success. So the same way I did the examples, I would like you to write one of these for each of these scenarios here. 